In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to, to God my exceeding joy. joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper to, that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this, and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ, and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we by our words and actions serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the Almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness.
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. You may be seated. Nor am in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Murdering in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We now take a moment to share with one another the peace of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Monday Thursday is from Exodus chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, 
Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate, and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the tenth chapter. St. Paul writes, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they had sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and they found it just as it had been told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't have life if you don't have the blood. It seems obvious enough, especially when it comes to our well-being. There is a deeper meaning on this Monday, Thursday. For back in Genesis chapter 9, God had told Noah and his family that they could eat meat as long as they drained it first of blood. Because the blood is its life. And they were not to eat life in order to stay alive. With that, the Lord declared that blood is life, and both are precious. Without blood and without life, one is simply dead. But those who are dead cannot be people of God. God is the God of the living. In Exodus chapters 20 through 23, Moses recited God's law to the people of Israel. He started with the Ten Commandments, of course, and then continued on with a whole host of other matters. But then in verse 1 of the 24th chapter, the Lord says to Moses, Come up to the Lord. You and Abraham, Nadab and Abihu, the seventy elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses and the elders are going to climb Mount Sinai and worship God from afar, but far nearer than he had ever permitted them before. Previously, he declared that anyone who had stepped foot on the mountain was to be stoned. But now Moses and the elders are going to step foot on the mountain, representing the very people of Israel. But they just can't go and step on the mountain, because they are not holy. And neither are the elders. And unholy people cannot come into the presence of God. So Moses comes to the people. He tells them all the words of the Lord. He tells them all the rules of the Lord. What they are to do if they are to be holy. The people listen to everything Moses has to say. All of the words, all of the rules. And they answer with one great voice. All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. There. They have promised to keep God's rules and lead holy lives. They are going to do the right thing. And that ought to give the elders confidence then as they step foot on the mountain and climb and approach the presence of God. But it's not enough. It's never enough. Though the people honor God with their lips, still their hearts are far from Him. And within 40 days or so, they'll be bowing down to a golden calf and calling it their God. I guess you have to say it is nice for a moment that they want to be holy, that they want to do the right thing. But intentions don't make us holy. Just wanting to do the right thing, just knowing the right thing, is never enough. And Moses knew that. And so he builds an altar with twelve pillars. 
And the people of Israel know that altars are for one thing. They are for sacrifice. And the twelve pillars remind them that this sacrifice is being made on their behalf. And so Moses has the young men sacrifice oxen to the Lord. And he collects the blood, that real, thick, warm, red blood that is life. And he takes half of it and he throws it on the altar that he has just constructed. A presentation, an offering to God. And then for the second time, he takes the book of the covenant, those words and the rules of the Lord, and he reads it to the people again. And again, they all say together with one voice, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and we will be obedient. The next thing Moses does is astonishing. He takes the blood that had been collected in those bowls and he throws it on the people. And he says, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. There is nothing romantic about this at all. It's ox blood. It looks like blood. It smells like blood. It stains like blood. It feels like blood. Remember, the Lord has declared that blood is life. And in a way, Moses is throwing life upon these people because this blood is shed, the Lord's covenant with all of his words and rules is ratified. It's in effect. And the Lord will be faithful to his covenant. And so now that the sacrifice had been made, now that the blood had been shed and the people had been covered by it, Moses and the elders can finally go up on the mountain. They can stand in the presence of their God, and God doesn't lay a hand on them. In fact, He feeds them. He counts them holy. Not because they promise to keep His word, to try their hardest, to be good Israelites, but because of the blood that was shed in their place. So serious is sin that a covenant between God and man cannot be sealed except by blood. All the way back to Adam and Eve, where God promises to the devil that he would strike at the heel of the seed of the woman. Ultimately, though, it is not the blood of oxen that makes people holy, but the blood of God's own Son. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For blood is life. By shedding his blood and offering his life on the cross in your place, Christ has restored you. That's why you're here tonight. Because Christ is your life, and He is here. It's Monday, Thursday. 
when we again hear of the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples, as he instituted it that night, the gift of Holy Communion. And there the disciples were gathered at table around their Lord, who was present with them in the human flesh. But as we all know, Jesus was about to be betrayed and crucified. And would the disciples remain steadfast? Would they remain beside their Lord through everything that was about to happen in the next few hours? We know the answer. Jesus even warned them beforehand that they would all fall away because of him that night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. He didn't say this to belittle them. Rather, he simply told them the truth. No matter how much courage and faithfulness they had that night, they were still going to fall away. No matter how much Peter protested to Jesus that he would remain steadfast with him, that he would go all the way, he'd even go to the cross with Jesus. But before the night was out, before the rooster crowed, Peter would deny him three times. Jesus' words were proved true soon enough. When they went to the garden to pray, almost immediately the disciples fell asleep. When Jesus was arrested, the disciples fled. When confronted, Peter denied him. So why did Jesus tell all of this in advance to remind them that just like their ancestors of Moses' time, their good intentions weren't enough. He told them so that they might not trust in themselves, but to trust in him. Jesus did for us what no one ever He poured out his lifeblood for you, for your salvation. Jesus is the sacrifice for your sin. And because we weren't there, as I mentioned yesterday, we weren't there on the road watching Simon carry Jesus' cross to Golgotha. We weren't walking beside the women who were crying and lamenting him. Because we weren't there with Peter in the courtyard, standing around the fire warming himself. God comes to you. And here again tonight, he gives you his body, which he gave unto death for you on the cross before he rose again from the dead. He gives you his blood that he shed for the remission of sins to seal God's covenant of salvation with you. But it's an okay thing. And it's actually a pretty nice thing too because while well, as a pastor I don't have to get a huge bowl of blood and fling it upon you on this Monday, Thursday. Jesus gives us his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. We can't overestimate this priceless gift. For it is through this gift Jesus gives us life and salvation. But we can fall away. But that's why Jesus comes to you. For he who sacrificed his body and shed his blood on the cross 
now comes to you in his supper to give you that body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins that we are in such desperate need of. This supper is not for those who say, well, I've done enough, or I've tried hard enough. No. It's for those who say, there is nothing about me that deserves God's grace. I cannot and do not trust in me. Rather, I'm a poor, miserable, Sinner. And I trust in Christ to save. And so he does. The one who has entered the presence of his Father in the holy place of heaven by his blood comes again tonight by his word to give you his body and blood so that you might be delivered with him to heaven for eternity. It's not your own will. It's not by your own doing. It's all the work of Jesus. So believe him for his sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding Guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith for life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to please rise as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, by your righteousness deliver our souls, which are precious in your sight. Embolden our hearts to pray, confident that Christ prays with us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, as the institution of your New Testament is celebrated this day among all peoples, make your saving power known throughout the earth. Grant that those who boast in the sacrificial gift of Christ Share him with the world he came to bless. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have formed us after the pattern of Christ's humble service. Help us in our vocations to follow his example of self-sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord God of Israel, we rally to your altar in the wilderness of this world. Hear our prayers for all those who are sick. Refresh them in their suffering. Comfort them with your word. And nourish them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Gracious host, you welcome the elders of Israel to eat and drink with you, and you did not lay your hand on them. As you welcome us to your altar to eat and to drink our Lord's Supper, do not lay your hand on us. The count us worthy to receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Gather us, Heavenly Father, around your Son's altar and around and throne with angels and saints. Bless our fellowship on earth, that at length we may come to share this feast in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Redeem us, O Lord, faithful God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christ, we have been free. The body of Christ.
pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always through all our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the stripping of the altar. During the stripping of the altar, Diane and I will sing responsively Psalm 22. And at the conclusion of the stripping of the altar, the last thing to be removed will be the processional crucifix. And at that, that time, I ask you to please rise.
I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments of my own and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And he stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall thou all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn.